hi everybody welcome to busy living so bum busy living so bum busy living so bum. it is episode 217 with ryan skinner hi ryan good morning how are you i'm doing well thank you how are you i'm blessed though. that's that's pretty good it's pretty good. Well, we started off, I talked to Ryan before the camera started rolling and um, he said he had a brand new baby. So did you get any sleep last night? <laughs> well, she, well, she's going to be a year this month. So it's like, um, you know, she sleeps really well. Thank God. I believe God gives you what you can handle. I'm, I'm going to be 41. Um, I couldn't, the first two months I kept looking at my wife. Like, oh, this is a young man's game, you know? <laughs> now she sleeps great. Last night she was up all night. Ironically, you ask, you know, tell you it's great. It's, I get to get up. Like, it's such a gift to get up and go see this little girl, like looking at me like, the old Ryan would have had his wife doing it or doing this. I get up first in the morning every morning. You know, I, it's a gift. That that time or in the middle of the night when I go in, nobody looks at me like that. This kid's eyes open and she smiles at me like, wow, that doesn't happen often, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. It's a gift. And you've had quite a ride so far in these 41 years of existence, huh? Yeah, it's been uh, peaks and pits, but overall, it's, it's you know, you learn from it. The universe, I went on a boot camp last week with some other business guys who were trying to do some spiritual stuff and learn to grow. And one thing we realized, you know, you know, this the universe, God gives you what you need to grow. And if you're not listening, you're going to keep getting it. But when you start taking the cues, you can kind of go with the flow and you know, go with the stream of life, as they say, right? Exactly. So what happened and what was it like? And now what is it like? Um, all right, growing up, I mean, the bottom line is I had two good parents. They did the best they could. They were hard as hell on me, but that's, uh, that's the way we were raised. We didn't have much money. You know, my mom was a housekeeper by day, cleaned the office at night, but we always had enough to get by. And they sacrificed for us in private school at Catholic school. My, they never even could go to my games because they worked so hard. Just tr good people. Um, but they didn't understand like the signs of anxiety and stuff like that. So I had some stuff happen with my uncle when I was a kid and um, he was just an abusive guy. Luckily he died when I was in second grade, so that ended, you know? But I didn't realize some of the stuff. You don't know what you stuffed down. He was an alcoholic. So I knew I would never be an alcoholic or a drunk. Those are two things I wasn't going to be. High school, I drank a little bit. Before the beers, I was a kid at the party who would sneak to pour the beer out just to fit in, you know? I was whoever people needed me to be. I was so insecure. College, I started hanging out with a second cousin of mine who's a tough guy. He was a real wise guy. And uh, I started acting like him. So I started doing things and making moves. And my parents made me go to college because I was the first one. And I got a scholarship because at a young age, I couldn't read. I had dyslexia and stuff. But a teacher noticed I was doing numbers introduced me to Peter Lynch and Fidelity and uh, I was trained stock on TV in seventh grade. So my wife had, I knew what I was going to do. I had no desire to go to college. My father said, you go to college. And back then you just do what your parents told you to do. My daughter thinks it's a democracy. She's eight years old trying to tell me how to do it. This morning she's saying, no, we're not going to do it that way. I'll tell you how we're going to do it. <laughs> and uh, let me, let me make this clear to you. This is like Kingdom of Ryan. You know what she said to me? No, it's a Kingdom of Mom. <laughs> but, you know, in college they started to come off the rail in terms of like, if I drank, I didn't know where it would stop. I didn't drink much because I didn't want to be an alcoholic. Like, it's me I just hated in my past. You know, my uncle was just such a weasel that I just, ugh. I started realizing when I got into the financial industry, I, like, everybody drank. So it was okay. I would get drunk. And, but the difference is they'd go home from the bar and go to bed. I'd crash in my car and go to work and just get like a bruise on my head. I still got through it because I was so hungry to build a business. And I wanted to build something on the outside. So I worked out. I made money. My outsides was real good. My insides were falling apart. At one point, you know, I'm sitting there with like a couple of houses, a couple of cars, and, and everybody thinks I'm happy. I'm dying. I'm in a room full of people and I'm just low in it. People have a smile on their face. I remember calling my dad from a Miami hotel on the bathroom floor, crying, saying, I'm so lonely. And him saying, Ryan, you flew five friends down here on your, on your dime to party. Why don't you go hang out with your friends? And that, that's how I was. I was just always lonely. I was engaged at 25 to the girl of my dreams and um, hanging out with those other guys. I was doing violent things. Uh, I was a financial advisor by day, you know doing violent things at night. And I wasn't a tough guy. I was just really insecure. I just wanted to fit in with them. I didn't know who I was. And um, she left. When she left, I, I took it hard. I actually left my two, didn't go to either my house, went to my parents' house, my old bedroom. And I mean, it was so bad that my parents knew I was taking Mike in the morning and taking off, and they didn't care. Anything was fighting from suicide. That's how bad it was. Then I had this certain major surgery. They found some lumps. They had cancer. And they gave me oxycodone. Now, I knew I wasn't a victim. I was a volunteer. But those guys I looked up to, they would take a guy's Rolex off his wrist for one pill with a dope set. I used to be like, oh, these people are so weak, you know? But the doctor was prescribing that. I'm like, I knew it. Before I knew it, those 680s a day, which was a huge prescription at that point, I had to snort them in the morning to get to not be sick. 
I, I didn't have to, but I was suggesting. So I just did it. I didn't care. I was going down that road anyways. Then one day, Doc says, you're okay. We're going to wean you off over the next two weeks. Two weeks. So two weeks later, I'm buying them on the street. Now, at that point, I had a big retirement plan. I had money saved. Over the next year and a half, 800,000 liquid went, two houses, two cars, and I'm on the streets. And uh, then I'm just like playing like a maniac. At one point during that, I married a girl who I knew when I was younger for like six months. And that did obviously, if you imagine on that, be, um, the ironic part was where I got out of jail, we ended up going together to get lunch and get a divorce. <laughs> so fast forward, I ended up, um, I was just doing bad things. Yeah, it, was just, it was just a typical junkie. I, I wasn't robbing stores and stealing from people, but I was still from drug dealers. And at some point I ran out of luck and I did something that was, the guy stabbed me and I ended up getting him back and love a lot. And it, was, it went beyond self-defense, they said. So this is where God comes into my life. I go into a courtroom, right? And I'm sitting in the courtroom and uh, I'm going to the courthouse and I, my friend's the chief. I said, man, you're not going to screw me, right? You're not going to hold me. He goes, screw you? Brian, screw you. He's like, you've had overdoses. At one point I had a suicide attempt. I had shot heroin and clonopin. Tried to overdose with a note in my pocket. I had a friend drop me out of detox so my parents would find me. Uh, an ambulance happened to be pulling up, God, a total God shot. Guy gives me a couple of knock cans and I'm back. And, you know, during that time, that's what happened. Like, I never thought I would put a needle in it. At one point, I was so sick that I, I had to sniff heroin. And once you sniff it, you're like, all right, well, once you shoot something, I mean, I even, I don't remember the exact film, but I remember it was bad for somebody else I ever felt, you know. Um, I always tell people, it goes up your arm in your head, your problems go away, and so everything you love, everything you ever work for is gone. I remember trading a TV off my wall for a bag of dope. Here I was a street junkie, just a complete junkie. Um, overdosing in bathrooms of Dunkin' Donuts. I remember a police officer, I was, in a, I was so sick in a, in a cell. He said, why are you on the box when you don't use it or something? I said, look at you. What, what can I do? I said, I am. It's at my house, though. He took my keys, went to my house, got the medicine for me. That guy's one of the best friends. Of me. That's how I'd say it. He is, uh, he's a chief of police now. We run a drug program there. Uh, the courthouse that I'm sitting at. So I ended up in a courthouse many times. Finally, the last time, you know, you, you poke a kid, you're not, they're not letting that go. But he goes, you screwed me around. You're my friend, you're on probation, you violate, you go drinking at local restaurants, you go to your pants, absolutely the line. He's like, God, ah, you gotta go around here, I'm gonna hold you. I'm in there, somebody said, why are you praying to God? Where was God when I was getting cigarettes put out there? Where was God here, where was God there? The guy says, listen, I don't want your excuses, hit your knees and pray to God. This guy's big, so I was like, all right, I'll go to my jail cell, pray to God. And I did. And I felt no relief. Okay, you know, just keep doing it because otherwise you and I can talk about it. I'm going to see the There's a guy I knew from Sullivan. So um, he was trying to do what's right for me, but I didn't see it at the time. Next thing you know, day seven, I don't want to do heroin anymore. So I started to pray to God, hey, you know, my probation officer, I hope he dies in his sleep. Not Benny, but my actual probation officer. I hope he dies in his sleep. And then I pray, I say, God, you know what? I hope I get out of here and I get to murder him in front of these kids. And it's like, I hope he doesn't die, but I hope he never comes upon you. So as I keep praying, things are getting better. That guy's one of my best friends. I have his picture in my office over there. Um, again, God show. Me. Like every as, as I pray for others, I get healthier. You know, and as I get healthier, everything else gets healthier. So I'm going back to court, and I'm about to get sentenced to go look at state prison. And the judge is having me there. And they, they call up the witness of the, the victim. He lived, and uh, they said, "Mister, you got to give me a statement." Here. So and so, he says, um, "Listen, I'm an addict. If you can't help an addict, don't hurt one. I'm not testifying. I'm going to testify against him." And I looked at him, I go, you can do what you gotta do. I'm not gonna get, get at you. He goes, no, nope, I can't help you. I'm not gonna hurt you any worse than you hurt yourself. Right? The judge goes, well, Ryan, we're gonna, in my lawyer's exchange, you have to release him. And I said, I said, ah. I said the judge, can I fire my lawyer? He said, no, you're not. Why? You're gonna get released. He said, if you put me back on the streets, I'll be using again, and I'll be back here again, and I'll be a burden on you. If you help hold me in a cage, you can give me treatment. I'll do the treatment. I got nothing to go back to right now, anyways. And I said, if you do this for me, I will come back here and pay it forward. She said, well, Mr. Skinner, I really hope so. And I said, no, that's a fact. I just knew it in my heart. Like, God, God, like, it was like, I'm not overly, like, I go to church because I think my kids do the right thing, but I'm not super religious, but I'm spiritual. And I know when God's telling me something because you don't say with such confidence. So I find a way, go back to my jail cell. People there are like, why are you coming back by choice? And I'm like, because I need to be here. Um, fast forward, I go to this program, we get out. I do, I have no way to do a pre release after that. So I go, Hope House in Boston. I said, I have no money. I used to be a financial advisor, I got nothing. But I'll scrub dishes all day long on my feet. Let me sleep here and do treatment. So I did that. Then I started my business. Little by little, I came back. And little by little, I can't really describe it. And I just God shot after God shot. My sponsor, the guy who's picked me up off the ground, referred me as best friend, like my first client. Then they referred me. And all these people just, and that wasn't big at that point. Then I started doing workshops and getting confidence to talk. And then I grew and I grew. And 
Then I offended somebody from the state years ago because Massachusetts people get offended and hold it. So every two years they would investigate me, like I was a thug or a criminal doing bad things at my job. Every two years would break me down. Every two years, God would come to the rescue, one at a time, one at a time. Even last year, they, they tried to get me to agree to something that never happened, and they kept trying to bully me. They said, if you don't do it, they tarnished my name in the press. And sure enough, God came to works in my life. Fortune Magazine called up and said, we want to do an article depending who you are, how you built a business on spirituality. I hung up on it. I thought it was a prank call. I thought it was my friend. They called back. I see Fortune. My admin comes in. She goes, Brian, did you hang up on Fortune? I go, that's not it. It's probably Bobby or Johnny. And I get on the phone. It's, they did an article. Then Forbes did a thing. And then little by little, people I never even knew went to bat because they were like, hey, you know, I'm on the board of the Heroin, Heroin, Heroin Education Awareness Task Force, HEAP program. We just call it HEAP, but people don't know. I'm on the board of the courthouse. And then I went back to the jail. I said, now every Friday morning, I spend my mornings in jail. I go in there and work with the guys. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a gift. And yeah, the, the, the girl had to, like, broke my heart years ago. We're married now. She saw me on TV at 34 sober at a charity link. Shot me an email. We got back together. I, we just went get coffee. Ten years later, we got together. Yeah, it's, it's all gorgeous. I mean, I, that is just. It's a gift. And the biggest gift is my mother. You know, your mother. So when you see parents, like when you heal, they heal. That's what it's all about, you know. Like my kids don't know me as a and they never will go. Oh, God. But it's uh, it's a lot of gifts like added up, and it makes you even there. I don't know. I don't know. Where, and I wouldn't think there is a there because I was the way last week. Other business owner guys, and there were a lot of them come from different backgrounds. One guy I don't want to put in his life. He's a recovering crystal meth addict, sixty-four years old, owns the biggest steel company in Kansas. I mean, the guys with hundreds of millions. Well, that's your problem. You have a lot of money. You're a good looking guy. You're in good shape. If you get three things against you, but you want to get sober, you got to be. That week we bonded. Like we talk every morning now at 6 a.m. And I'm like, you're going to get a wake up call from me. His wife called me. She why are you why are you doing this? Because you know, God did it for me, you know? And I'll tell you, um, that, that's the gift. Like, um, kid I sponsor. He's not like my personal trainer. His kids. He said, kid, you know, it's, when the lights come on, you know, when you help people and the lights come on in their eyes, that's the gift. Because when you're struggling to come back, you don't know if you're going to come back. So you don't really get to enjoy the process because you're scared of it the whole time. With somebody else, I, I say, I know it's going to work. And they're like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, it's like gravity. If I drop this pen, it does the same thing for everybody. It's the same thing. If you add spiritual principles to your business, to who you are, it works. And, uh, you know, like right now, we're number one in the country that we do. And uh, that's shocking for a junkie. And the best part is we tie. You know, we, we do six days a year in charity donations. And I volunteer. That's the good stuff. Like right, when it's about Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. It's just a, it's a lost world. You know how it is when you self when you're wrapped up in self. It's never enough. At least not for me. I mean, it, so it's, it's been it's it's a it's a gift. You know, it's it's such a gift. Oh my gosh, Ryan! For one, I got emotional too. I don't know why I wore mascara. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I've never cried on a podcast before. <laughs> I think I see in your face, kind of threw me over because you were just like. It, but the, the truth is, you know, I heard somebody say this one time. Like, sometimes you get justice, you get what you deserve. Right. Sometimes you get mercy, you don't get what you deserve. I've had that in the plenty of times too. And I've gotten justice. But then sometimes you get grace and you don't even know how it happens. You're just like, this is insane. I get up every day while I bed in my knees. My wife goes, I've never seen somebody so happy to get up in the morning, to go to work, to come home from work. She goes, You have your days, but she goes, You're just you're, you're upbeat. And I'm like, it's a gift. And I'm like, listen, I get track runs, I have stuff under bridges, I've been to point prisons. Like this is there's not there's nothing that can happen that God will give you. Oh, and I agree with you 100%. It's kind of interesting because they say that as alcoholics and addicts, you know, we have been to hell. We know what hell looks like. I mean, I, so when you talk, when you're talking about this, like the only solution from hell is having spirituality in a higher power to which I call God as well. I do this is the only word I know for, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Some people get offended. I'm like, listen, I'm not talking religion here. I'm talking about you know, what do they say? Religion when you go to church and you think right. about fishing and then like spirituality, you're fishing, you're thinking about God. Like if yeah. I go like you, know, you can see the ocean, like I love to just drive by the ocean. There are nights I get out of work, I'll drive an hour up, just drive along the ocean, drive home. There's something that settles me about that. I don't know how to describe it to anyone else, but you understand it. Like if you're in the and the worst thing is that when people don't have it yet, this gift, they think, oh, this person's different. They didn't mean it. I was a flat out street junkie. And to get my license back at work, I had to show my court reports, all these different divisions. And I got some gave me my license back. Some said, we're never giving you your license back. So it's not like, but God guides you. Now I started in January, I'm running a mentor program for other financial people. 
want to build a business on spirituality. And like, I'm like, who knows what that'll take? And then I say, I don't care. I just know it's going to be good. You know what I mean? And that's a good feel. I didn't have that before. Well, so many people, I think when we're using, we're there for the outcome, right? It's all about the outcome. <clears throat> I'm going to do this and then I'm going to win the prize and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be okay. But then you go and you get the prize or you go to get it and you're like, oh my God, this is it. Yep, because it. I, you know, because it, it's all about the spirit. It's all about just the ride, right? It's the journey. Yeah, you, you nailed it. It really is because I, I used to think if I had X amount of savings, I'd feel better or more peace, more security. And yeah, it does give me peace of mind to have a couple bucks saved. It's better than being homeless. But I will tell you, I, then I hit this and my attorney said the other thing is you don't seem real. We're trying to do some trust work. You don't seem really. So listen, I know you're doing what's right for me. I just have faith. And frankly, none of it matters to you. Like, not as long as I put food on the table, like, I don't need that. My, you know, eventually I get a little cottage for my kids, maybe, but I don't really need it. As long as I can help other people and, and know that I'm good while I'm doing it and I don't have to worry about my family, that's what, that's, that's what we're here for. Listen, I probably have 40 years left if this body, God only knows what I did to it. Like, so right now, even they found some lumps in my back, I just got radiation. I'm like, you know, you're right? I'm like, no, it's just kitty butt. Like, there's nothing that God won't handle. Like, I have complete conviction on that. And, and if it goes a certain direction, I mean, I watched a buddy of mine die from cancer. He was 59, and uh, I, I took every morning off. I used to go to his house, have tea with Tommy, and iced tea. I'd sit on his back there for six months. Clients big. I can't eat before 11. Nope. And uh, I watched this guy die. This guy came to A, hated God. He was a business guy, big business guy, cool. Sold the company to CMGI for 20 Canadian. I'll tell you. I didn't know it until he, until he died. If I had known, I would have never bought the coffees. I would have had him buy the coffees. But when I got to watch Tommy pass, it was one of the greatest, it's one of the last days, the greatest experience I've ever had. Because you didn't die like a man or a woman, you you died like a connection with God. The whole time he had such conviction after doing step work, I watched this guy just go with such peace and conviction, knowing there's something else. And I was like, and it just changed me. It just it just did. It is so. I have a dear friend that also died. He ended up um, passing at 41, and had two little kids and a wife. <coughs> and when I met him. You know, he was all that in a bag of chips, right? He's got the slick back hair, the Burberry raincoat. He's got, you know, he's got the swag. He's like the man. And he came in and um, he was brought to his knees, you know, in recovery and was given this light that we have, this spirituality, this God that was just like, and when he passed, he was so okay. He was like, I'm not scared. I am not scared. God's got me. And that is like the biggest, like, I'm not scared. Like, what's the scariest thing that's going to happen? Nothing, right? You God. went to step three. And I, I thought I took it years ago, but professionally, I did. I always wanted my job. You see my sponsor. So long as I have this job, I don't want to lose this job. I got to come back to this industry. Now, step three to me is this. Oh, whatever you want, you got it. Like, your plans are way better than mine. Mine, I stress myself out. I'm miserable. It's not fair to, like, it's just, my, my world sucks. <laughs> Excuse me, my just sucks. I'm a moron. Like, I'm just a guy who, when I finally go with the flow and go with the stream of life, and I try to contribute to the stream of life, I float with God, you know? And it's it's not always easy, but I'll tell you right now, it's always manageable. Oh, but to get to that place that you're willing to go with God, right? So I remember, like, for me, I always, but my life is kind of like the cha-cha, it's one, two, three. I got to wake up every morning and be like, okay, I'm powerless over everything, right? I have no idea what's going to happen today. And there is a God for me and he will restore. He's got me. He's got me. He's restored my sanity. I haven't prayed to drink since that day 14 plus years ago that I got on my knees and I said, God, take this away. And I haven't prayed to drink since then. Imagine. Can you imagine? So I trust him. And then to let go and be able to lean into that today. Like I just got to lean into God today and be like, all right, I'm just going to let it happen. Because if I write my ideas down, I'm eating paper, you know, whatever. And it gets all in my head and I get worried about this stuff. I become this human that's just out there, just running around in circles, right? I go down these rabbit holes that are so dark and scary. And, uh, but if I just live in the moment and just go be like, all right, God, whatever you're going to bring to me today, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. And that is so sometimes hard for people, right? To be willing. We all want that. We think we got control and I got control of nothing. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't got control my staff, let alone my family at home. But, the, but what, what you just said that I think I've never heard it put that way, I like that a lot, is when I think of the stream, just lean into it. Like, you just relax into it. it does, you don't have to, it's, it's so effortless not to, not to fight anymore. And, and people, it's, the hardest thing is people think you're going to have to fight and overcome it. You're never going to be, it's like, when you're focused on fighting something, it's there. You just look the other way. It might be a pull, but you don't have to go. I like to lean into it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as somebody I've else. I've heard it put that way, honestly. 
But I th- somebody else told me this. You know, a sponsor told me this. Yeah, she most of what I have is regenerated. Yeah, right. I got nothing original. <laughs> me neither. Nothing yeah. original. But it's so like, but to be able to share it and hope that somebody hears this today, it's like that she would, she was like, Elizabeth, I want you to just lean into it. I was, you know, I was, I was all worried about something that's going to, that hasn't even happened. It's going to happen maybe in February. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm like crazy about it, right? It's just, I go, well, with this tangent, what's going to happen in February? What's going to happen in February? And it's like, who knows what's going to happen today? And she said, you just need to lean into it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it feels like when I do that, I don't, I have no problems in the world, right? Like everything's beyond. And I feel like when we're in our addiction, I mean, I'm like you were talking about, I mean, you had all these beautiful things, a beautiful woman that you like knew was your, like your life. You had these cars, you could go on the checklist of what we're supposed to do growing up, right? Yes, oh. right. <laughs> I call the bullshit checklist, excuse my language, but there's just a pile of crap. You check it off and you get the now what's every time. No. Exactly. We all do that. I was the same way. I'm like, I got the car, I got the house, I got the man, I got the debt, the debt, the debt, and I could go on and on and on. And I'm like, and I'm still sitting here freaking totally alone. Like you mentioned, like totally fucking alone. Like none of this material stuff fills this hole in our soul. It just doesn't. It it really doesn't. And the and the funny part is like, it's never going to. And once you get past it, though, like I don't know. Like my wife says to me, last year I turned it when I was turning forty. I always wanted to use Ferrari. I think I might probably use for just a cheap one. Use, you know, blah, blah, blah. At one point, I'm, like, you, I'm about to have another child. I've got a child with me. I have a cast in the back. I'm a jackass. I have the garage. I have a garage. And I thought to myself, she goes, there's nothing more. You're the hottest to buy for you. You know the funny part? It's like my birthday. I'm like, just make me a cake. more hang out with the kids. I don't want anything. Like, there's nothing. There's just nothing. I mean, you know, and that's such a gift. And it's not that I have everything. I don't even think I had the stuff that was on my wish list when I was younger. I just don't give a shit. Like I have people around me I can hang out and talk to. Like I, have, I do this. Like life is so much better than just driving around alone like a jack is in a sports car and looking at like the sad midlife crisis guy. Or like any any other BS you can do. It's just it's nice when you just go with the flow and you interact with people and you value the interactions. Cause I never valued the interaction before. It was like, what can I get from you? Or what what do you want to get from me? Or it was like, what do I have to do? To appease I tolerate people. I I value it. Like I, I genuinely give a shit about other people. And I know people care, the people I'm around care back, you know? So it's, it's a different world. It's a completely different world. And I feel like if anything I'm chasing today is that sense of serenity that we talk, we, like that you're talking about right now. It's yeah. like, I just want to be around the people I love and meet new people and anybody that's out there that's like struggling for this, like you meet them and they really want to be sober. Like you can, when you meet someone that really wants it, not the person who's like, oh, let's sign my slip. I gotta be here and I'm fucking, I'm out. <laughs> and I'm gonna be on my phone in a meeting and I'm gonna come, oh, I'm gonna come in late and I'm gonna leave early. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk to anybody. I'm just gonna- I've spoken and joking and just, you know, wasting time. There, there are people, and you know what? Some, I was that person. And you know what I realize now is sometimes the light, there's a spark that goes off. You might not be ready. When they're ready, you'll be the familiar face again. Oh, I know how I saw him. But hey, you remember seeing me? And that's how it happens. God puts the right people in your path when it's time. And it's easy. Like, you know that. It, when, it, when, it's, when it's effortless, it's, it's right. It is when it's effortless. Like when everything's effortless. When you don't, are, like when I stop, like I, there's that round hole and I keep putting that square peg in there and the universe is saying, hello, it's not gonna fit. It's round and this is a square, get the fuck over it. You know, and letting go and letting go to that is like, wow. Oh my gosh. And it's the humbleness of it. Cause I, you know, I didn't realize what humility was. It was like, Oh, I thought humility was like, oh, my God, I'm an alcoholic. In front. Like, that's so humiliating, right? Like, I just admitted to all these strangers. But it's really humbling to say, you know what? I'm going to take the direction from somebody else. Like, wow, wow. Like, to have that guy now that you have a picture of in your office, it's, like, amazing. It's, it's, you have no idea. Like, the guy who arrested me the most of anyone is the chief now. And he was at my grin over my office last week with a big jacket with my logo on it. Telling people how great I am. This is referrals all the time. I have more. I have more police officers that have at least a dozen that have arrested me. People from the jail that when they retired, they had clients about like, these are people who saw me. Like they're like, they, you know, one day I saw somebody a couple weeks ago. She said it was like seeing a ghost. I'm like what do you mean? She's like, you're that. You're the. You're the guy that we put the buzzer on the, the bathroom because you overdosed in there and they had to kick the door. And I'm like, oh, I know, I know. It's a different times. She was no, obviously it's different times. Look at you. And I'm like, 
it, and that's the gift, you know. Uh, it, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it, it, it's all in front of me. I can see the gift every day. That's the best part. Like, I see my parents so much. My dad, he was like, disgusted with me. My dad said in front of the therapist, we're not even, we should just die. It's not bad. Last time he came, my last overdose that I tried to commit suicide, he comes in with dad, I'll never do it again. He threw a sweatshirt at me. He goes, you know what, Ryan? I'm here to identify the body before you're dead. And uh, he goes, I don't even care anymore. And that was the last time I used. I still have that same sweatshirt. It's like a ratty little sweatshirt. And uh, he laughs. He goes, you know, imagine that was it. We were wearing all your grandkids. It's a different world. It's just, but how lucky are you that you're still here? And it's not even luck. I believe it's divine intervention. God. I, that's why you got to let him direct your life because if, if you're blessed enough to be here, you, I always believe this day I stopped doing my wife said, Well, I don't know why you're up at the jail so much. I do it on my, I take time out of work to do it. I take time out of my pay to do it because she just, you know, she's had to be a sick. She works two days a week, so she's home. And why aren't you spending that time with me? And it's the truth because the second I stop doing this, this all goes away. And you goes in my arm. You're out on the streets. The kids are out on the streets. I'm, I'm dead. I'm like, but if I just do this one hour a week and a couple of days, this is what God gives us. You don't have to worry about the electric bill. You don't have to worry about any. Nothing could go wrong. You know, like someone went on our bathroom. Well, who cares? We're wrong. We'll pay to have it fixed. Guy from AA is a contractor. I got to roll that out. It's just, and that's the, I call it the AA mafia because I'll tell you, I ran around mobs before. And now it's like, this is more connected. I get somebody for everything. And it's great because the people I can trust because they've walked the walk. They have spirituality. Somebody's gone through what we've gone through. They got, they're both. They really are. And we think that we can't ever get here. So if the person that's listening on this and goes, oh my God, how did he do this? I mean, it's like, we just do it one day at a time, right? Like we, that's it. All you do, if you wonder how to do it, you just right now fall to your knees and then ask God for help and then reach out. Pick up the phone and reach out. There are people that want to help you. It's not that we'll, we'll help because we feel obvious. I don't feel obvious. I do, I do what I want, maybe a little towards God, but honestly, I do what I'm, this is my purpose. Like my purpose is to go help other people who are sick and suffering or made bad decisions. And as a result, God blesses me in ways that well beyond that I could do it. And I deserve to be honest. And it works out. Oh, it, it's so dumb. I mean, every day, that's what I, I mean, I spend a lot of my day, you know, talking to the most of my sponsee. I do this and I talk to sponsees all day. And it's like, where's the time to really work? It's like, this is the reason God has me here, right? Because how do we come out of those dredge? I mean, like waking up the next day going, oh my, like, I can't even imagine you waking up and having your dad come in and go, oh my God. And I thought I was just going to identify your, I mean, like that is hell on earth. Yeah, it is. And, and the funny part is when it changes, it changes so drastically that, you know, what I've realized, come to realize is our perception, we think of the future, we think of the past. The reality is that none of it exists. It's just not real. It's our way of distracting ourselves because the mind wants to protect us from reality. But if we just say reality right now, reality is pretty fucking good. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. Because I'm sitting at a comfy chair in a warm office. Like, life's pretty good. You're sitting there looking out the ocean. Life's really good. <laughs> like, like, for people, these are like a pipe dream. Like, I have friends that are like, yeah, but I, know, I don't have a high school education. Yes, my wealthiest friends have had high school education. I can assure you, I mean, you know, how, well educated people, I mean, you got a Harvard guy working for me and a Yale guy working for me. Like, well educated people make very good employees. So, like, it doesn't matter what your background is. You've got the grit and the tenacity to want to change, you'll get it, you know? You can get it one day at a time. It's very, it's um, it's a life beyond my wildest dreams. And it sounds like it is for you too. Cause who would have ever thought, who would have ever thought? I mean, that just like, think I did that vision of you like with it in your arm, it just makes me, ah, uh, you know, but it's like, but God had you the whole time. He had you the whole time. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's insane. I think about it, I'm like, how did this end up this way? And then now I'm holding a baby. I'm sitting there watching Sesame Street. And I don't like Mickey Mouse, but Sesame Street, God, that almost is a real good character. And and, uh, and and the grove is awesome. And I'm sitting there bouncing around, bouncing around the knee, giving her a bottle. Like this is life's pretty good. It's know? pretty amazing. Yeah, when we all can get there, and all we have to do is have the willingness that you talked about. Call somebody. Get willing to like at least say, you know what? All right, help me. I I I mean that like raising my hands and falling to my knees like you just described. I mean I remember walking on that beach that morning. August 14, 2006, and falling to my knees for the first time because so many times before I'd be like, oh God, please help. You know, kind of like the foxhole. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, just get me right now. But I was literally fell to my knees and was like, please <clears throat> just help me. And it works. Yeah, you clench, you're shaking, every muscle in your body tenses up, and you just want it so bad. And then the reality is, once you do that, I mean, it's just like little by little, like you said, one day at a time. All you have to do is just bit by bit by bit. Like I have my guys break up the guys in the jail. Like I want you to go up to four, four sections, your body, your being, your, your bonds with people and your business, whatever you want to do. 
And I want each time, every two hours, I want to have one thing checked off for each day. So that way they have like seven or eight things each. So we review each week. There's a lot of stuff they've done. And I show them progress. And they go, so why do you do this little stuff? Make your bed. You know, do this. All this stupid little shit that my mom told me as a kid. I'm sure you don't want to do it. Make your bed. And I used to be like, what does it matter if I make my bed? Like, why is that going to impact my life? Big time. You know, and um, as a result, just like little by little, he just gets there. And, and the funny part is there is no there. It's just here. Like, you know, tomorrow will be cool too. And the next day might suck and that'll be okay too. And, then, you know, it's. Well, I, there's this prayer that we do in Philly. I don't know if you guys do it up there, but it's called yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'm just going to paraphrase like yesterday's gone. You have no stake in, you have no stake in yesterday because it's already gone, right? No money in the world will bring back yesterday. And then tomorrow the sun will rise either in splendor or behind a mass of clouds, but it will rise. But you have no stake until tomorrow because it's yet unborn. So all you have to worry about is today. And I tell my girls all the time, I'm like, they're, one of them yesterday said to me, she's like, you know, I've got one foot in this place where it's totally scary. And my other foot is over in this place. It's so beautiful. It's going to be freaking amazing. And tomorrow, but I'm like, God, if you're sitting there straddling two days, like if you're sitting on a wooden bench, it isn't really comfy if you're sitting on that. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good look. Right? <laughs> not a good look. And it doesn't feel good at all. So either you're going to jump and be like, all right, I'm going to be in this today. I'm just going to be in today. And sometimes that means just looking at my feet and going, all right, this is where I am. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah, it's funny. So when I got back from that thing last week, that boot camp, that we did a lot. We got pushed under the ocean water. We had to run in the sand and roll. It was like kind of cool, crazy stuff. Sit in buckets of ice, feet, deep breathing. Like pull more ice over up to your face. You had shot. Go on. Yeah, some crazy stuff. I needed to take, I needed to kind of do something to get my guts back, you know, like just to get more intensity. So the other day it was snow. We got snow. So I said to my daughter, she said, what, what, what do you do? I go, let's go for a walk on the snow. I took my shoes off my socks. So I said, let's walk on the snow. She said, what are you crazy? we will keep you right where you are. All you're going to be thinking about is your feet. You're not going to be thinking about school or this and that, Halloween. You're not going to be anxious. She's going to sit there with your feet in the snow. She said, I don't like this. So I said, we go back in the house. But she was, by at that point, she was there, you know, and that's what I try to get her to do. Like, I notice the leaves. Like, I can see out my office right now. There's something for me, I, I don't know, I just never noticed the leaves back when I was a junk box. Even when I was just drinking, whatever it was, I just never, now I'm like, oh, these look cool with the light on, they look real, you know, it's just amazing. We miss all those free visuals, you know? God gives you a lot of highs if you just sit back and think. Oh my God. Well, somebody said to me once, if you look outside and you see how many different shades of green they are, there are, you can't even count that high, right? Because there's just so many, I mean, like, it's amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, but our heads sit here and tell us that we got to worry about all this junk that isn't here. I mean, obviously you can't worry <clears throat> if you don't buy a ticket. And I love that you, you're helping people with their finances because that's a big thing for addicts and alcoholics. Yeah, we do, we do retirees. Well, we don't do really what young. My youngest client's about 56. We help people when they get to retirement to protect their money and their income. But um, it's cool because a lot of these people, you know, I, a guy yesterday, if you call my son, my son's struggling with that. Addiction. Like I've, I've done a lot of stuff. So I'm open about it. There's a book a lot of like, back. there's no question. The clients know like a heroin man. If you don't like it, you know, early on in my career when I got sober, I went to hide it. And I'm like, fuck you. Know? Yeah, I did prison time too. <laughs> there's bigger stuff than that. Keep reading. Um, but I don't know. It just works out. It's just being, I think it's the whole thing about being honest. And that's what they, we read and how it works like right now. It's like, I have to be honest. Like if I'm not honest about everything, then it's just like I'm walking around hiding something about myself, which my secrets make me sick, right? Yeah, my secrets make me very sick. Very sick. And I didn't realize it. You know, and when I did my step work, I left a few things off. They came back. But I worked on them, you know, when they came back. At one point, you get healthy enough that you're able to work on But, you know, God, you're right where you're supposed to. I said, you know, you miss something that's okay god didn't intend it was meant to come out it would come out yeah. well i always tell people i did a cliff notes version the first time <laughs> i was like i can go back a little bit but that whole way it was too much pain it was too i couldn't handle it the pain was too much so i like did a little bit but i could at least do that checklist like we say like all right i did my fourth i did my fifth step you know now i can keep moving yeah, so you, know, you fit in with the crowd just today you want to fit in we're, we're sick people we want everyone to think we're Nowadays, like when I go through these, I'm meticulous and I don't give a shit about those things. I'm doing this for me. Like you realize, now, once you know the reality of how it works, I mean, people don't realize the steps and steps. It, it, it's bulletproof. It literally works for everybody. It works. Everyone gets their own result, but it works perfectly. It works better off. But it's scary. Isn't it funny? Have you ever noticed, and I'm totally noticing it recently, and I don't even know why, but I know I did it. But you know, when somebody comes in 
and they start reading the book and you read the book with them and they start to get it right. You can see in their eyes. They're like, oh my gosh. And then they go, why doesn't everybody do this? Why doesn't everybody read the big book? This is for everyone. Everybody on my Christmas card list should get the 12 and 12. Because- everybody, honestly, I understand that. Listen, it's a playbook for life. I know. It really is just a playbook for life. And it's so funny because everybody that t- starts working on it is like, I want to, t- I want to scrape from the rooftops. I want to do everything. But I feel like the one thing is you have, I don't know if it's like, because we've been to hell, we're so willing, we're so willing to have an answer. Like I want to be sober today more than I want to be drunk. And that's how I, I felt like I chased my recovery. Like I chased my booze, right? Like I got to still do it today. It doesn't matter how many years, how many days uh, you got today. I mean, the reality is I've seen guys, the longer people have, I was told the closer we had to a drink. I believe it. Cause I had a little time at one point. I think, I think it's, uh, Cause I had a prescription. I just went off the tracks. It did last long ago, mom, but it wasn't like heroin, but it was still like, so how did this happen? I did step work, you know, I thought I was absolved for it. You know, now I'm intense about it. You know, I go at it like I was starving. I get up every day unemployed. Like obviously the business owner, you get up every day unemployed. You gotta chase it. And the same thing with same thing with like addiction recovery and helping people. You gotta make sure that like I have things that pop up. I gotta touch the base of this guy that time, this person. It's important to do that. It really is because I think that our egos, at least for me and what I've and I've noticed from other, it's like our egos get so big. Like I got 30 years, I got 40 years. You're going to have a party for me and let's have a celebration because I got all this time. And it's like, I always want, I, at least I hope I stay like this. Like I ain't got shit. I just, <laughs> I, I'm just a big group. I don't give a shit. I, I said to a client today when I was coming to get on this, I left the guy who was having me running the meeting. And she's like, oh yeah. She's like, even so cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, um, Oh, good for you. And I'm like, no, I'm just a child in a man's body. Like, you know, honestly, God, like, I just don't be too impressed. I said, uh, but I just have some nonsense. I'm going to go share and then I'll be around later. <laughs> but like, you, just do, you know, when you don't take yourself serious, life gets a lot lighter. It is. And if you take and if you realize, like for me, I still want to learn. And it sounds like you're obviously when you go, because you hear it from people in prison and I'm sure in meetings, you know, I, at least I hear things all the time from somebody that might just only have a day. And it's like, those are wow. the ones that remind you and how grateful you are, like how bad you have to keep it. That person who's sitting on their hands shaking and sweating, and you're like, oh shit, I'm not going to feel that again. I mm-hmm. didn't want to feel those junky sweats again because I was the biggest, I remember being so sick. Oh. Now I don't, I don't feel sick. My bones hurt, they hurt, and we'll kill it. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's such an amazing life. And, um, I just, um, I'm filled with gratitude as you are today. And I'm just, Congratulations on your daughter's birthday a little bit ahead yeah, I'm of time. Excited. I'm very excited. It sounds it's awesome. It's awesome. It took two and a half years, but it's awesome. You know, there's a lot of fertility, a lot of stress. And now it's like you forget all again, you forget all the pain. You just look at the joy of it. Oh, it's such a blessing. It's awesome. And God had you the whole time, right? It didn't matter how much time That's it was. That's really I knew. I said, I said to my wife, I go to work out. She goes, How are you so sure? Like, he, he didn't he didn't get, tell me about this day. No, I have it. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And she just like, all right. And then she knew. And there you go. Now you have this beautiful baby girl. And life is amazing. Life is beyond our wildest dreams, right? That's awesome. I would never think I'd be changed by it. Nobody would think I'd be changed by it. I'm like changed all the time. I love it. It's all good. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. It was really there, awesome. There aren't many meetings now because of the virus and stuff. So now there's some online ones, but it's not a ton up yet. So uh, this was great, honestly. It's awesome. It's been awesome. Thank you so much again. Congratulations on everything. And um, I and do. Keep doing what you're doing. This is great. Oh, oh, thank you. I will. I will. I will. God willing, I'll be doing it. I don't know how long. It's it's crazy because it's all happened. It's all God. I mean, somebody said you should start doing a podcast, and I'm like, what's a podcast? Yeah. I had no idea what a podcast was. My kids are like, now you need to go on YouTube. I'm like, really? All right. So I'm here. Here we are. And it's just like, again, it's all God. And if I'm just keep getting waking up in the morning, just willing, and I have no idea what's going to happen. That's okay, too. That's the good stuff. Yeah, it's the good stuff. It's the exciting thing. Well, everybody, thanks again. And until next time, keep getting busy living sober. Bye-bye. <laughs>